What is going on, everyone? Might go back with another Mail Day recap. As always, it will be a video with a whole bunch of different stuff. It might be mostly Phillies related, but we're going to have items from the early 1900s to cards that just released in the last week or two. Got a few ticket stubs, some slab cards, some raw cards. As you can see, the catalog. So a lot of stuff. Appreciate you taking some time out of your day to watch. Hopefully you're all doing well, enjoying baseball season, enjoying the NHL and NBA playoffs, the schedule release, if that does anything for you with the NFL. I mean, to me, it's interesting for like 30 seconds. But the hobby uh, is always exciting. It's fun. We're getting into summertime. We're already more than a quarter of the way through the baseball season, which is absolutely crazy. And, uh, you know, before you know it, the national talk will be kicking up. We're only two and a half months away, so definitely time to kick it into gear and start planning for that as well. Let's get into some of the pickups, and we'll start with some raw cards, and then we'll work our way up, but really fun stuff here. So we'll do uh, the modern stuff, and I've got another one of these Phillies cards this is the Golden Mirror Image Variation. You can very easy to tell this year with the golden back. This is Zach Wheeler, among the best pitchers in baseball. Definitely got roughed up in his last start, but was incredible before that. He's one of those five or six guys in contention for the Cy Young this year in the National League. Long season, so we'll see uh, how things go, but he's been pitching incredible. This is a nice image, getting his NL Championship ring last year so that's cool another one for the set still a few more to go for that series one series two by the way was announced pre-sales went up for that no checklist quite yet but it does release june 12th so pretty close less than four weeks away so there's a nice zach wheeler for the collection then i got a little selection of tops now cards that have arrived still some more i'm waiting for they can pop in anywhere from 10 days to like three weeks after they go up for sale. But here's a Ranger Suarez, longest Phillies scoreless inning streak since 2011. Who was Cliff Lee? Got an Alec Bohm, so a little fun factoid for uh, collectors out there, if you care. But this is actually the first baseball card that features the Phillies City Connect uniform. Now, I'm not a huge City Connect uniform fan. In general, I think the majority of them are fairly ugly. Uh, I just like the traditional uniforms. You know, I'm all for changing things up and doing some stuff once in a while. But, I mean, I've gotten used to this uniform for the Phillies. The hat's definitely solid. Um, but I still don't think it doesn't scream to me, Phillies. And it, the uniform just doesn't scream Philadelphia. I mean, I know a lot of people try and spin it that way. A lot of people work for the team and such, but... It's a pretty divisive uniform. There are some people who love it. I'd say there's probably like 20%, 15 to 20% that love it. Probably like 20% that hate it. And then that whole middle part are people who I'd say there's like 20% that think it's okay. They're fine with it. It's grown on them. And then there's like 20% that don't like it. And then 20% who probably don't like it, but are afraid to say anything. But first uh, card with that, I'm sure we'll see a lot of them in maybe not series two, but update. And then next year, because top seems to love doing it. It's like, you don't see a Padres card anymore in their regular uniform. They're all in that um, city connect. Here's a Kyle Schwarber cracks 250th career home run in multi home run game. Here's extends, uh, Scoreless streak to 18 with complete game shutout for Ranger Suarez. That came out before that last one. He actually has a third one that's come out. And then Bryce Harper scores 1,000th run in a three home run night. So that's a nice one. And then bonus, you get this bonus with the uh, opening day set. So this is Ranger Suarez. You get it for a complete game shutout, cycle, uh, three homer game. And then, like, no hitter if it happens, which is obviously unlikely to happen. But uh, Aaron Nola actually had a complete game shutout last week. So there'll be another bonus on the way for people who bought into this set. So I always love to grab these. I mean, they only produce a couple hundred of them. So they're uh, cool additions to the Phillies collection. So that's the Tops Now stuff that came in. We've got uh, 
Let's look at the autographs first and we'll check out those kind of oddballs. So here's a little autograph lot that came in from my buddy Jason. These are like five years in the making. Jason uh, does a lot of autograph, um, autographing. I know he did a lot pre-COVID. I don't know how much he's been doing it lately. Um, I know things have slowed down. I guess you can still do it, obviously, IP now, but He's out in Arizona where you have spring training, minor league games, stuff like that. So these are some Phillies he had picked up a while ago and shipped them my way. Uh, definitely not the uh, cream of the crop of uh, Phillies history here. We got Andy Ashby, who actually had two stints with the Phillies. He was a promising young guy and then ended up um, getting moved. And then the Phillies re-signed him uh, years later after he had a lot of success in San Diego. That did not go well. He did not pitch very well with the Phillies in that second stint. And uh, probably best remembered for flipping off Veteran Stadium after he got booed off the mound after getting uh, smacked around quite a bit. So perfect for the Phillies collection there. Tommy Joseph, big prospect for the Giants. Phillies acquired him. It was kind of the centerpiece, the main piece, in return for Hunter Pence. Hunter Pence went on to help the Giants win three World Series. Tommy Joseph had like two or three mediocre years with the Phillies. He wasn't terrible, but he just... He was one of those guys that was going to get full-time playing time on a team rebuilding and a poor team. He was never going to be someone who was part of a huge, you know, really good team. Hit cleanup and stuff like that for the Phillies for a few years. We'll see. Uh, there you go. His first season with the Phillies, 21 home runs, hit 250. Second year, 22 and 240. So, like, he had some power, but obviously not great. Did have a few tops now moments, though. Walk-off hit in the 11th, wins it for the Phillies. So cool to have some cards like that. Here's Jorge Alfaro. He uh, was one of the pieces they got back for Cole Hamels when they had shipped him off to Texas. And then they actually flipped him along with prize pitching prospect Sixto Sanchez in the JT Real Muto trade. So, you know, the trade return for Hamels, you know, Alfaro was decent, had some power for the Phils, and then ended up helping net. Real Muto, who's obviously been really good for the Phillies. So I'd say that trade worked out. Jamari Baylor, uh, this guy, honestly, don't know much at all about him. He may or may not still be in the system. I'm just not sure. Um, probably unlikely to ever actually play for the Phillies. Grady Sizemore, obviously fantastic with Cleveland. Part of that huge Bartolo Colon um, trade. Him, Cliff Lee, a whole bunch of guys um, were acquired. And then, uh, unfortunately, as you can see, his career, you know, he was really good there for a four or five year stretch and then just could not stay healthy, had chronic knee issues, ended up getting a second chance, played with the Phillies over the course of two partial seasons, and then uh, career kind of winded down. But definitely a cool one to have in the collection. Kenny Giles. Ken Giles was really good with the Phillies in his brief time there. Phillies flipped him in a trade with Houston to get Vince Velasquez and a few other guys. And, you know... Ken Giles had some success um, after that point, but then just couldn't stay healthy and kind of faded away a little bit. He was making a comeback this spring training. Uh, I don't know if he's still in someone's system. He was with Atlanta at one point. And here's another Tommy Joseph with another walk-off hit. There's a walk-off hit in the ninth in that, I guess it was for military service um, day uniform. And then this one here is actually from Topps Heritage Mini. And this was actually a pull. Um, I had ordered, I think, eight boxes of this product, which this is actually a good product. They cost $50 direct from Topps. And they've actually shot up. They're about $100 a box. And the last time I checked, they may have gone up or down a little bit. I'm not positive. But uh, I broke, a, I think, a box on camera. And I might have opened one other box. And I gave the rest to my dad to open. Um, he loves ripping products, so I often just let him rip stuff, and then I just kind of work with stuff after that. And uh, he pulled this, so it was pretty cool. Steve Carlton. Steve Carlton, not, you know, a high-dollar autograph pull, not because he wasn't great. Some people might not realize, newer collectors, people who don't know um, a ton about baseball history, but among the best left-handers, if not the greatest left-hander of all time. And... Um, you know, just had a sensational career, Hall of Famer, but he has been signing a lot of stuff for a long time. He definitely didn't make the money that the guys nowadays make. Then I think he had some bad investments, and so he 
did not turn down many opportunities to sign his shows and such. And then, of course, um, hasn't turned down many opportunities to sign from Tops. He seems like he's one of those guys in virtually every product every year. So his values aren't real high for honor ass, but that's definitely an awesome looking image, an awesome looking card, and uh, a great pull for sure. So that's pretty cool there. So those are some newer cards. Just a couple oddballs I picked up off eBay in a group. Um, this Ashburn, I mean, I already have a copy of this, but uh, every now and then I'll pick them up. This is a 1977 TCMA. I just love that design. I think it's just a really clean, nice, classic look. You know, it's TCMA, so they're never high value cards or anything, but it's not all about value. It's about what you like what's aesthetically pleasing players teams you collect i like to add a little bit of all of it so that's just a beautiful card there so i picked that one up because i think there was like some percentage off or free shipping or something um i picked up this kurt simmons which is a 1987 tcma baseball's greatest teams the 1950 phillies so that's cool don't really love the centering on that this is a guy who used stock images um, so a little disappointing on that, but not the end of the world. And then honestly, don't know a lot about this guy at all, but it's a 1945 play ball from TCMA 1983. So pretty neat. So I picked that one up and then I was actually supposed to get a Richie Allen in the order too. And the guy like ran out of them or something, but I bought the Kellogg's, um, Von Hayes. And again, you stocked images, but he described it as like near mint or something. And then it came with this huge crease. And I was like, and I'm not one to usually complain about the condition and such. If it, you know, sometimes I'll just pick up another or something. But for that, I was like, dude, like this thing's a little ugly. You know, do you have another one? Like, I don't even care. I'll buy it or whatever. And he just, he sent me another one. This one's way cleaner. looks way better. So definitely happy with that. Never go wrong with picking up a Von Hayes for the collection. And uh, a Keller's Butter Von Hayes, you know, even better. So, cool, fun addition to the collection there with the Von Hayes. Honestly, that one will probably end up going off for grading just because it's cool to get cards slabbed, though. Yeah, that'll be a tall boy, so that's not bad. That's same pricing. All right, other stuff. We got some slabs. We got some ticket stubs. Uh, as you can see... Standard catalog of vintage baseball cards. This is fifth edition. I think they put out six editions. Um, this is the newest one I could find. Picked that one up because uh, I was watching a video from Dave, uh, Blue Jacket 66, and he was talking about it. And I was like, why don't I have one of these? And it's, you know, I haven't had a lot of time to go through it, but I mean, it kind of serves as a price guide. I mean, this is probably like 10 years old. So most of the prices are probably somewhat. I'm sure some of the high-end stuff has gone up quite a bit, but some of the other stuff. But it's not just that, just to kind of see different sets or get ideas or be able to kind of look things up and gain some knowledge. So, Dave, thanks for the suggestion on that. Happy to pick that up. Uh, let's look at some SGC slabs and some ticket stubs. Uh, we'll start with the first ticket stub. Here's a football ticket stub. Steelers... 49ers, 28, Steelers, 24, October 14th, 1951. Got a Beckett uh, VG3. Didn't really care about the gray. Just I got these done because Beckett had a sale and I was sending in some other stuff. So I said, what the hell? Let me send in these tickets that I had picked up. I think that's pretty cool. I doubt this ticket has a ton of value, but pretty neat there. I think... I forget. I, l I remember looking up a while ago. I think I printed off box scores. I want to say there was at least one Hall of Famer that participated in the game, but I don't think they did a lot. Um, and then the other one that just came in from Beckett, and the reason I used Beckett is because it was substantially cheaper. Obviously, I understand PSA has the top value and all that, but you know sometimes you don't want to spend too much and you don't want to wait for eternity. Um, but this is World Series Game 4 from October 4th, 1942. Cardinals-Yankees. Cardinals 1-9-6. Uh, that put them up in the series three games to one. This got an EX Mint uh, 6. So 6 is not too bad there. Yankee Stadium. Now, 42 tickets. I mean, I'm sure this car, this ticket in that condition should be worth a couple hundred dollars, I'd imagine. Um, 
you know, I don't know specifically offhand, but it's not as high in demand because it's not a Yankees win. Um, if it was a Yankees winning World Series ticket uh, from a year they won the World Series, it would be uh, a little more in demand for sure. And this wasn't really as star-studded of a World Series as some of the others. Um, you know, the Cardinals had Stan Musial, who in this game had a couple hits and an RBI. Um, so obviously he's a big-time Hall of Famer, and uh, I think Enos Slaughter was playing as well. Yankees-wise, though, not really one of their super star-studded World Series. Phil Rizzuto was leading off, and then uh, DiMaggio. I think this was his last World Series. In this game, he was hitless, though, so... Still cool. Um, definitely neat to pick up. I mean, those are both be put up for sale, but they're the types of items that I put up for sale. And if they sell, great. And if they don't, they don't. Like, I'm not... They're not things I bought just to, you know, for that immediate flip. Um, all right, some graded cards from SGC. This is a 2012 Topps Allen & Ginter Bryce Harper Mini Gold Border Rookie Parallel. 8.5 Near Mint, Mint Plus. This came back in the last SGC order. It was actually a crossover from uh, one of the pretend companies, GMA. Uh, it was actually a GMA 9. I kind of thought it would probably go down a little bit, which is fine. I just, I wanted it in the SGC holder. Uh, last time it came back, it actually did not say gold border. It was technically mislabeled, so I sent it back with my most recent order, which should be coming in, in just a few days. Uh, this came back early, though, so... Happy to get that fixed. SGC customer service, as always, doing a very solid job. So happy about that. Then this one I picked up for the collection. I got this one dirt cheap. Basically paid for shipping. The card would cost nothing. I think I wanted it 99 cents. Um, obviously, I had to pay like $5 shipping, but that's fine. If I saw this in a $5 box at a card show, I would have picked it up. 2002 Topps Post Serial Scott Rowland. So a cool little... Um, Odd one there from Post Tops, 14 of 30 uh, in an 8, so not a great grade, but that's fine. I mean, what's the difference if this is an 8 or 10? Would I prefer it in a 9 or a 9.5? Sure, but it's not really the end of the world. It's, you know, not an expensive card regardless, so cool addition to the Phillies collection. And then these are cards that I picked up. This one, I'm kind of frustrated because it came with a scratch in the case um which was not photoed but this is a 1950 drake's eddie wakis in a two and i actually have both of these so i just sometimes pick these up second time and then i'll kind of compare them with my other copies and move one of them this is a 1950 drake's dick sisler um just love these cards they're super cool so a two and a one and a half and then pick these up very nice grades for 64 top standups. Ray Culp in a six and a half and Jack Bolcham in a six and a half. And honestly, I don't remember offhand uh, which of these I have. I probably have both of them um, in lower grades. I know they made Callison as well. Um, I love the top standup. So it's they're the types of uh, cards when I see them, I'll actually pick them up or I'll at least toss bids. And I thought I won these at great prices considering the grades. So. Those are the slabs, and then the final uh, the final pickup to show off, and we'll see how well you can see it um, on screen, is a larger item. It is slabbed by PSA, won this uh, one of the recent auctions. I think this was an REA. It's a 1909. Give me a second. Going to have to handhold this camera after it bends down a little bit there we go 1909 to 13 m101 uh sporting news charles s Dewin. it's a supplement and it's a psa one who cares about the grade it's freaking 120 years old uh supplement to the sporting news st louis september 22nd 1910 great image got that catcher's mitt Super, super cool. There you can see doing Philadelphia National League. And I think the front looks great. I mean, there's a little mark there. There's definitely some little bends, but like whatever. Um, the back definitely has some defects, but it's a blank back. So what is the difference? 
but definitely happy to get that sucker in. Just uh, a super, super cool item for the collection. So always happy to pick up anything Phillies related. Hopefully you guys enjoyed seeing all the bobbleheads there in the background as well. But just cool items. Always fun to hunt this stuff down and find it and let it build up and do a mail day. So appreciate you guys watching. Uh, more videos on the way. I'll be doing an SGC reveal most likely Sunday afternoon. Um, could be as late as Monday night. We'll see. Just kind of depends. Usually the SGC orders from me arrive on Sunday um, for FedEx, the FedEx Express or however it gets sent out. Get it shipped on Friday and they come Sunday. So look forward to that reveal. Uh, a lot of fun stuff in there as always with them. And then uh, Topps Chrome Platinum Anniversary next week. Fun product to break. And then Series 2 a few weeks after that. Appreciate you guys watching. And I will talk to you next time. Have a great one.